Avon calling. No doorbell. No door knocker. This door swings open on its own accord. This is the door into the garage. It should be self-closing. Receptacle outlets are okay. We got a whole video for the bathroom. Coming on along. The windows have been replaced recently, you know, in relative terms. And a double pane vinyl frame. But all the screens, which look to be in good shape, but all the screens are up here. All right. Oh, they're double pane. Um, Double sash, which means you can open this. Check this out. Lower the window and you have a screen like that. Or you have no screen down here. Those are your options. Okay, so double pane, double sash, vinyl frame, double sash windows. This ceiling material, okay. This popcorn ceiling material has been known to have asbestos in it. Got a nice seam going across here. We got repairs right there. Got repairs right there. When you see soot around the air register like this, that means that your coils are probably dirty. The air had to go through the air filter, through your coils, go through the air duct, it means your air duct's probably dirty, to come out here and broadcast itself like this. It's called a clue. It's a clue that your 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 coils are dirty. And the popcorn ceiling, okay, it's been known to have asbestos in it. Now here's the part where I might be a little unconventional about this, but there's no sense in getting it tested. All right, if you're going to take this off, if, you, if you're going to paint over it, that's encapsulation. And if you're going to take it off, and I don't blame you for that, you're going to wear a mask. Regardless, oh, we've got an air gap underneath our front door. How about that? Come on. Air gap beneath front door. So what happens is, is you're going to wear protective. You're going to wear goggles. You don't want to get that in your eyes. You're going to wear a mask. You don't want to get that in your lungs. And so you're going to go in. You're going to get it all. Just have it all scraped out, bundled up. Okay, and then you take it to the hazardous waste dump and then just have them take care of it. And the, a lot of them, if it belongs to a municipality, they'll handle it for little or no price and just treat it like it's asbestos. You don't need to test it because if you take this off, you're going to do it the same way. Junior and Juniorette, they need to go visit Grandmom or Granddad or somebody or Uncle Bud, but they need to go visit somebody while you take all this down. Kids don't need to be playing in this when you're taking it down. And then y'all gets taken down and bagged up because you're wearing protective equipment. I mean, come on. COVID. We got masks. We got gloves. We got goggles. We got these things. And bundle it up and just treat it like it was asbestos. No sense in testing it because you're not going to treat it any differently. And if you're going to keep it, if you paint it, that's called encapsulation. Encapsulation is acceptable. Now, all home inspectors are required to render an opinion about the foundation. That doesn't make us engineers. And I'm a firm believer that a home inspector ought to stay in his lane. I'm not going to pretend like I'm an engineer. Although I do use some engineering equipment. But using engineering equipment doesn't make me an engineer. You know, if I wear a... a, a um, a cop a vest and holster or whatever. It doesn't make me a cop, all right? So and you need to be careful if you're going to dress up like a cop, and you need to be careful if you're going to act like an engineer. But I do use some engineering equipment, and one of the things I do is I shoot the floor. Pow, pow, pow. I guess, you know, ha, ha, ha. And by doing that, I get the floor height elevation differential. Now, I'm not an engineer. I don't calculate slope. I'm not going for tolerances. I got two guidelines that I that I go by, and one of the guidelines is no more than one inch of floor height elevation differential within 25 feet. That's good enough for FHA. Don't have it. More than two inches overall. More than two inches overall. 
don't have it. Don't have it. So I do not meet those rough guidelines. So now I'm left with the way the windows operate. And they're all new. <laughs> okay. How the doors operate. They're all relatively new. Got a front door that swings open on its own accord. Got a, a door upstairs that sticks in its jam. You know, I'm not... So what's the brick like? There's a couple cracks underneath these windows. Those windows over there and the brickwork. There's a little bit of movement. Really not much I can tell. So I would never dissuade my client from seeking perfection. I'd never dissuade my client from getting a second opinion. I would never dissuade my client from getting an engineer. But if you get an engineer for this house, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not talking and I'm not talking you out of it. But you're likely to be paying for peace of mind. Likely to be paying for peace of mind. Probably the engineer will probably come in and say, really? But it's good to know. He's going to tell you the same thing I'm going to tell you. Get the trees away from the house. Fix your grading and drainage out there and over here outside. Get those trees away from the house. You're going to hear that. But he's probably going to tell you, and I'm not saying that he will, but you know the odds are pretty good that he's going to tell you that everything's hunky-dory here. So, good to know. Good to know. And I don't know. Speaking of good to know, I don't know if it looks a little darker outside, or maybe I sound tired because I'm an old man. But this is the last video that I'm doing today, and you're going to see it earlier on in the report if you watch them all. Okay, but but you know for me this is the last one I'm doing. This is the part where I like to say thank you, dear client, for your trust in your business. Those things mean the world to my family and I, so I, I really do appreciate that. And, you know, if you think I did you some good today, a good Google review, you know, that means a lot to a small businessman. So, coming down here, this is not graspable. This is graspable, okay? But it's open-ended, okay? It's supposed to be turned back into the wall. You're not supposed to be able to catch your clothes on that. When you're coming down the stairs, you don't want to flip and spin down, and down, and down, and down, okay? Like the old Cramps song. You don't want to, you know, be like that. So, um, you know, in, in 1980, when this home was built, these handrails were acceptable. They're, they're no longer acceptable. I'm just kind of telling you about that. So if you like my, this is our, Parquet, had to think for a minute, had a senior moment, and Parquet is French for entry by the way, but we've got some Parquet up here. I put moisture levels on the first floor, and that really isn't the first floor, but it is the first floor, so I measure the moisture in the uh, living room, the formal, okay, I measured that, and I was getting between uh, 4 and 5 percent, so that's considered dry by most manufacturers, so this is something I like to do, it's, you know, I wasn't really serious, I mean, I, I, I was looking, I was looking, you'd be surprised what you find when you look, so, if you, Got any joy from this video? There's a like button right down there. And if you have insomnia, okay, there's a subscribe button right there. And you can just subscribe to my videos, and that ought to put you to sleep. That ought to put you to sleep. We got a doorstop. This is the only doorstops I've seen in the house. This is the primary bedroom suite. We do not have a vent fan in the vanity area. We do not have closed closets, uh, closet doors. Okay, we do not have closed closet door in the primary. Okay, we're going to keep moving around. This is the laundry, we talked about that. There's something. A little later. Uh, reverse polarity here. No GFCI and reverse polarity. Moving on along. Oh, floors with 
buckling there a little bit before covering. Got our racetrack. How high is this window? Bedroom windows should not be higher than 44 or 45 inches. Alright. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Since I'm here, I'll just go ahead and Okay, we got a screen on the lower part here, so this is not a double sash. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's still a double sash. So if you want to bring the screens down on the other one, but it is a double sash. I can see the little gripper. Okay. Nice windows so far. Well, I was here. A lot of these receptacles are loose in the wall. Outlets, well, outlet boxes, receptacle, electric receptacle outlets. A lot of them are loose, and a lot of them have loose blade tension, so things just slide in and out real easy. Just kind of heads up on that. And moving on along, northwest bedroom. I got some uh, infrared videos. I'm walking around up here, so don't forget that part. It's fine. It's, it's all this. This is the southwest bedroom. This is the bathroom. With the commode that's too close to the bathtub that's got rust on it. And we do not have a stopper. Um, we do not have GFCI. Vent fan vents into the attic. Southwest bedroom. It's all pretty. There's We have an access, an attic access here. And I was not able to get up into that. And I even put my ladder up there and pushed on a little bit. And so there's something going on. I can see a wire coming through there. I don't want to disrupt the alarm system. Um, but I was getting some resistance. And I certainly couldn't fit up there. So I just went ahead and, you know, gave that up. And then, you know, this is the one I was able to get up into. And we talk about that enough in other videos. And now I'm going to the piece of resistance. This is a hobby room. Maybe it's a media room. Now, I've had a hard time finding any definitive statement that says a bedroom should have a closet. It's better if they do. You get some houses built in the 1920s. They didn't have closets then. And I looked, I looked, the California housing, you know, I tried to get as strict as I could. I tried to find out because I, I hear, I hear that from um, real estate agents quite often that a bedroom has to have a closet or it's not a bedroom. That's, that's what I hear. But this room does not have a closet. This is not a bedroom because it does not have a window or a door directly to the exterior for emergency egress. If there's a fire out there, the only way that somebody sleeping in here can get out is to run through the fire. They can't. If you're in this bedroom, you can pop out the window. That bedroom, pop out the window. You've got a chance. You've got a chance. You're locked in here. You're locked in here. This is not a bedroom. It does not have emergency egress to the exterior. And it doesn't have a closet. I want to thank you for that Google review in advance. 